ask me what car to buy, chances are the Subaru Crosstrek is going to be part of the conversation. Why? Watch the rest of this video to find out. Not completely new for this generation, but Subaru has prioritized and done all the right things to make it better than the generation before. The powertrain options remain the same. The base model and premium trims get a 2-liter engine that makes 152 horsepower. The Sport, Limited, and Wilderness trims get a 182 horsepower, 2.5-liter four-cylinder. If you're looking for something with a little bit more pep in its step, then the 2.5 liter is 100% that engine. It's got nice giddy up, good acceleration. There's quickness here. This is an engine that is definitely gonna allow you to have a little bit of fun. A hybrid would also be a big plus, but we don't really have that to talk about right now. Here's my biggest gripe. No manual or no automatic transmission, just a CVT. I say this with all sincerity, most people don't care. Does your car get you from point A to B and then back again? Yes, great. No one is going to be performance driving a Subaru Crosstrek. And look, if there's a part of you that kind of wants to, then you do get paddle shifters on some of the higher trim levels. These actually kind of do a really good job of mimicking gears. So when we shoot car to car, I always downshift to try and get a little bit of acceleration. I'm gonna shift into manual right now. I'm in sixth. I'm gonna put it into fourth and it responds really quickly and really nicely. Yes, it gets a little, little louder and a little more drony when you kind of rev it a little bit higher, but Otherwise, you know what, it's becoming so much more refined that the CVT should not give anybody cause to avoid a purchase. Subaru's done a really good job refining and working this CVT so it's less drony sounding. It doesn't have as much of that rubber bandy feel, and more importantly, it helps make both engine options more efficient. Both engines get a combined gas mileage estimated 29 miles to the gallon. When you upgrade to that higher output engine, you're only sacrificing one mile on both city and highway numbers. Only in the wilderness trim do you see a larger drop off in efficiency. So the chassis has been stiffened. It's got more steel in it, uh, more reinforcements, so that structurally it's a lot stronger. What they have also done though is softened the suspension a little bit to kind of make up for that. And you really do get kind of a nice counterbalance. They've also been a lot more generous with the insulation in here, making the interior of the Crosstrek while you're driving a very pleasant place to be. And of course, because this is a Subaru, all-wheel drive comes standard across the board. So if you find that road trip takes you into inclement weather, then you've got added traction at all four corners. Special information nugget, Subarus are still the only car company that offer all-wheel drive standard on their vehicles. So there's now a brake booster in here instead of just the vacuum brakes. Um, is it a massive improvement? I'm not sure that it's perceptible, but what I do know is that the brakes feel solid and really confidence inspiring, and that is always a good thing. The steering gets a new rack and pinion set up in everything but the wilderness trim. That gets electronically power assisted steering. Easier to turn the wheel when you're off road. Again, tough to differentiate from the previous model, but each one of these smaller improvements mean that the car in general just feels better, more refined and a bit more grown up. X mode can turn a great road trip into an even better off-road trip. They have different modes for when you are in some little more tricky terrain like dirt or in snow or mud. Hill descent control, I think Subaru does a great job on theirs, is a great system when you're coming downhill. If you're on slippery terrain, it will actually help grab the tire that's losing grip, allowing the driver to focus on tire placement and steering. Something you may not know about the Crosstrek, it gets 8.7 inches of ground clearance, which is more than some base truck models. The Wilderness trim gets 9.3 inches. Those are pretty impressive numbers. So if a tall ride height for improved visibility is important to you, then the Crosstrek is definitely one to check out. There are five trim levels available on the Crosstrek. The base has a starting price of just under 25 grand without destination charges. That's the same as the outgoing model. For your money, you'll get an impressive list of standard features, including steering responsive LED headlights, 
You'll get dual zone climate controls, 17 inch wheels, a tilting and telescoping steering wheel, keyless entry, and 60-40 split rear seats with surprisingly generous cargo stashing space. On the base model, you will get dual 7-inch touchscreens. They are Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatible, so that's good. If you upgrade to the premium trim level, you're going to get this 11.6-inch screen. It's oriented vertically. You can see all of your Apple CarPlay stuff right here. And wireless charging and wireless connectivity are both an option. The cabin doesn't shout luxury, but you do get a lot for your money. Plus, Subaru interiors aren't boring. They use interesting fabric choices and patterns for visual interest. And even though there's a fair amount of plastic in here, we're going to give them a pass because, well, the price. That premium trim also comes with push-button start, USB-A and C charge ports, and access to extras like the all-weather package that includes heated front seats, a power moonroof, added safety features with blind spot detection and lane change assist, and rear cross traffic alerts. This is the sport trim. On this one, you are going to get that bigger 2.5 liter engine. It's gonna come in around $29,000, but you're also gonna get X mode, which has a couple of other driving modes for snow and mud. You're also gonna get yellow sporty accents on the exterior and interior. You can see them there. You're also gonna get wireless charging and have the option for some additional packages. The Limited includes most of those package features you can add on as extras to the lower trims for about $31,000. The only thing that's not offered in that price are an upgraded audio system from Harman Kardon and a navigation system from TomTom. Tom. Not sure that extra $2,400 is worth it if you've got your phone hooked up. Hi Apple CarPlay! The Wilderness trim starts around $32,000 and gets that improved ground clearance a 3,500 pound towing capacity that's up from the standard 1,500 pounds. You'll also get all-terrain tires and hexagonal fog lights. You also get raised roof rails and 20 cubic feet of cargo space. Somehow that's more than the 19.9 .9 cubic feet the rest of the lineup gets. Not sure how they swung that, but with all your gear, you'll take every inch you can get. And it gets water repellent upholstery on the seats. Speaking of those, the seats in the Crosstrek are really comfortable. They've actually been reworked so that you're going to get less vibration from the road in your booty, uh, which is always quite nice. As far as room in the second row, because this is a little bit of a smaller vehicle, let's see how that does. Behind my seating position, you guys, I mean, it's just such a no-brainer. There's plenty of room back here. Um, I have, t I mean, I, yeah, there's a lot of room. Even for my head, I have a long, tall body, even though I'm only five feet four, and I still have room here. The middle seat, you know, this is not luxury city, but um, it's doable for a smaller person. And then if you're behind Mike Danger because he was sitting in this seat, even here is really not cramped at all. I still have probably about four inches in front of my knees. So overall, the second row, is not an uncomfortable place to be. If you'd like to trade your car in for one of these highly recommended cross treks, you can find out what your old car is worth at kbb.com. Just click on that link right there. Other vehicles in this category that should be in your crosshairs if you're shopping will be the Jeep Compass and Renegade, Chevy Blazer, Honda HRV, and Toyota Corolla Cross. Incidentally, all of those similarly equipped to the base cross trek are more expensive. Crosstrek styling really hasn't changed very much. It's just gotten slightly bigger. There is more body cladding, which might not be for everyone. But hey, if you're looking for something a little more luxe, then get it in black. You won't even see that stuff. There's arrow in the wheel curtains, and there are active grille shutters, which improve fuel economy. So you can see what I mean. It's a great car at a great price, lots of great tech, and features that do dual duty both on and off the road. Recommending the Crosstrek is a no-brainer for me.